Hola estudiantes. So I wanted to, to I wanted to talk to you about the learning process in this class. Okay? Because maybe you have an idea, a wrong idea, about how you should learn in this class. And I want to clarify that. Okay? Bien. Here we are going to use some very important tools. Numero uno, cognates. Cognates they are words that are coming from the same source, okay, usually Latin, and they are written in Spanish and in English very similar, and they mean the same thing, okay? So they need those three characteristics. They're coming from the same source, they are written very similar, and they mean the same thing, like inteligente, romántico, ¿verdad? Bien. Also, um, we are going to use another tool which is called cog um, sorry, um, decoding. Okay, decoding. We are going to start decoding uh, the sentences. Okay, we should pay attention to pictures. We should pay attention to words that we are words that we already know, so we can start understanding what they are saying. For example, when I travel to different parts of um, America Latina, sometimes they use words that I don't know. And I was raised a, in a Spanish-speaking country. But when I go to another one or when I go to another part of my own country, um, I hear people using some words that I don't know, but I'm able to um, understand ¿verdad? what they're trying to say because of the context. And I'm like, oh, you mean this. Okay, so we're going to start using our own knowledge, okay, as a base in order to move forward, okay? So if you see a bunch of, or like, let's say a paragraph, I'm not expecting, ¿verdad? I'm not expecting you to know every single word. Mm -mm. Impossible. Because when you go to real word, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Uh, so, what I want you to be able to do is to decode, to get the gist, to have an idea of what they are saying. Okay. That's what is important. So, to learn about decoding, we're going to do this activity here. You see the map, you see, for example, America. Remember, America is a continent, okay? And United States is part of America, okay? So that is why it's called it's, um, United States of America, okay? So America del Norte, America Central, America del Sur, and then the whole thing is America. And then Europa, Africa, etc. Here we have Oceano Pacifico, Mar Caribe, Oceano Atlantico. And when I say them, you are pretty familiar with them because you know, ah, this is the Pacific Ocean, this is the Caribbean Sea, and this is the Atlantic Ocean. Extremely simple, ¿verdad? Because you have that background information. You, you feel comfortable, okay? Bien. So now, for this activity, what you have to do is um, state if this is true or false. Okay, so let's go to this one, letra A, España. But you don't know what is España. Well, if we're talking about countries, then what you should do? Well, take a look. Look, we have here España. So, Spain, right? España está en Europa, no está en América del Sur. Now you're going to start wondering, is this true or not? But before that, you're, you will want to start decoding, getting the, 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 the gist. And you know that Europa sounds like Europe. So España está en Europa. And then, no está en América del Sur. Then you see the no, and then América del Sur. So you're, you're assuming that this is about location. And you're correct, because España, ¿verdad? Está. And then you see está. You see es, 
the star, that word is indicating, actually, is indicating um, location. Está en Europa. No está en América del Sur. So, the location. Good. So, this one is true. The second one, Puerto Rico, Cuba y República Dominicana son islas en el Mar Caribe. So, we know that they are in the um, Caribbean Ocean, but it's not talking about the location of them because it's using son and it's not using a star. They are talking about islas, and islas sounds like what? Islands, right? Yes. Islas islands. So, here they are saying son islas. So, they are using son islas because they are defining them as island. And then, uh, so, yes, they are island. Cierto, right? Letra C. Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica y Panamá están en Centroamérica. Centroamérica, ¿verdad? And then, are they located there? Yes, cierto. Están, again, is expressing location versus son, which was expressing a definition. I'm defining these as island. Good. Uh, and then I'm giving the location in el Mar Caribe, ¿verdad? Bien, but the most important part is here, the definition, son islas. Bien, and then the, the next one. México es parte de América del Norte. So what is parte? Parte sounds like what? Part, right? And it is. México es parte de América del Norte. And is that true? Yes. México es considerado parte de América del Norte. Cierto. Again, we are using es, we are not using están, because es and son, they are going to be expressing definition. I'm I'm giving you two lessons in one, okay? I'm talking about está and están as location and son and es as definition because eventually, very soon, we will see them. So I want you to start organizing your mind, okay? Bien, here, Argentina tiene costa en el Océano Atlántico y el Océano Pacífico. And we know Argentina is a country, right? And then... Oceano Atlántico is the ocean in the Pacific, the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. And costa sounds like what? Coasts, right? Argentina. If Argentina is here, then Chile is here, and then the Oceano Pacifico. So the statement is incorrect, it's false, okay? Bien. Uh, so, this is a good example of, of the coding process, okay? And this is basically what we are going to be using during this whole chapter and the whole semester. We are going to start decoding. We are going to start using, first, our background knowledge is extremely important. So, we have to create background knowledge to put things on top of them okay so we are going to start building on top of the information that we are um, learning okay or we already learned okay bien then on your own you can read about el mundo eh, el español en el mundo here um, I encourage you to listen to the recording is posted on Blackboard, okay? So, uh, if you do this, listen to the recording, you are going to start developing another very important skill, which is called the listening skill. Not only you are going to learn the pronunciation of words, but your ear is going to start getting acquainted with the the, the 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 language okay 
and is going to start um, paying more attention. It's going to be more critical, okay? Because it's going to help your brain to start organizing the material that is here in man. So please go to Blackboard and play the, the audio and then try to complete this. According to the teacher, Spanish is important is an important language. Then true or false, okay? Man. Uh, Again, here, you're learning uh, not only the pronunciation, but you're developing the listening skill, which is extremely important because you could be very good at writing, but if you don't develop that listening skill, people could talk to you in Spanish and you will be like, mm, sorry, don't understand because that's a skill that has to develop. We have different skills and we have to develop them, um, every one of them, by, uh, in a separate way, okay? Bien, so, go to Blackboard, play the, the audio, listen, and study. If you don't know what is the meaning of one, then you should start creating flashcards. Okay, here, this is a good example for you to see that you already know a lot of um, Spanish vocabulary. I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with, with some um, menus items, ¿verdad? With menu items, for example, um, café, ¿verdad? Eh, tacos, etc. Okay. So, in this activity, what you're going to do is basically identify the words that you already know and the ones that you don't know, and just take a guess, take a guess, the possible meaning of them, okay? And then verify, go to the, to the dictionary and verify your answers, see? In this section, it's talking about the cognates, which we already covered. Uh, also, we have to be alert because there are some false cognates. Okay. Remember the three characteristics that I mentioned. They have to come from the same source. They have to, re to be written pretty similar. And uh, they need to, to mean the same thing in both languages. Okay. Bien. So, and then here you have a reading, ¿verdad? It's about Sofia. You take a look at, at, at the pictures. The pictures are going to always give you an idea of what is going on in the reading. So, take a look at the picture. That should be your first reading, okay? In this case, before you begin to read, look at the image. So, the book is helping you is preparing you to learn in a different way okay so please be open-minded and start uh, learning in this way it's a different way it's it's new and it's working okay it's going to work believe me okay and it's fine to feel a little bit lost it's normal that's what is going on when someone with a human being um, starts learning a second language. It's part of the process, okay? So welcome. A ver, so then you should predict what the text might be about. Then point out the cognates and other words you recognize in the text. Can you answer the question at the end? So again, first, just go over the reading, identify the things that you know, then go back and start reading and putting things together, okay? That should be your approach. Here, pretty similar um, and simple, okay? Visual uh, images and then previous back, background knowledge 
put them together, you are decoding. Okay. In this section, we get to more, uh, well, to more vocabulary, and not necessarily you will know all of them, but we can make connections. And it's extremely important that when you're learning, you link, you start, it's important to start linking new vocabulary, new ideas, new concepts with old ones. Why? Because then you are going to record them in your long-term memory. Okay, and that's basically something that you're going to learn for a, I mean, forever, basically. Okay, and it's going to be saved in your in your hard drive. Okay, so here, um, classify. Look at the drawing of the classroom and listen to the words for the people and objects you see. Okay, and then. Listen, uh, list the words above according to categories below. It's important that you start organizing things in categories. It's going to help you to organize the material in your brain. Okay. It's important also to um, start memorizing this vocabulary. Okay. Remember, we're going to start building on top of the material. So, in order to get to complex ideas, you need to start getting the foundation, okay? So this is foundation, important. Uh, and then here is, whenever you see those uh, blue boxes, memori memorization is going to take place. Okay, whenever you see the headphones, please, um, you should listen to the audio, okay? Remember, this week, the audio is going to be posted on Blackboard. For chapter one, chapter two, three, and four, they are going to be um, on Eliteca, okay? Okay. Uh, so listen to the pronunciation, and again, remember that you're learning while listening, you're learning uh, and developing the listening skill, okay? No comprendo. ¿Puedes repetir, por favor, cómo se dice blackboard en español? And then, <clears throat> once that is memorized, you should do these activities, okay? Fill in the blanks. Uh, what will you say? Think about that. Right? What will you say in those situations? Then in this in this page, página 10, we have the alphabet. Again, Track number five is going to um, give you the whole alphabet, okay? The pronunciation. And again, you're going to be develop, develop, developing the listening skills, okay? Bien. Uh, so, ¿qué letras son? La letra A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, Ñ, Ñ, Niña, Niño, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V o V, W, W, O, W, X, Y o Y y Z. Okay. And then in this section, you can do that activity. Okay. You can do activity number three if you listen to the audio. And 
what is very important here is that you should be able to spell um, spell out your name, okay? Be able to say, hola, me llamo, o mi nombre es, okay? Y se escribe, ¿verdad? M, A, R, I, L, Y, N, etc., etc., okay? Eh, you should be able to ask another person, how do you spell, ¿verdad? Your name. A ver, acá. ¿Cómo se escribe, verdad? ¿Cómo se escribe? ¿Cómo se escribe tu nombre? ¿Puedes repetir, por favor? Can you repeat, please? ¿Verdad? ¿Puedes repetir? For the purpose of the summer section, it's extremely important that you memorize this first part. These, of course, you should be acquainted with them, but I'm more concerned with this part. No comprendo. Puedes repetir más despacio qué significa, cómo se escribe. Puedes escribirlo en la pizarra. Um, Está bien así. Ok. So those are pretty uh, important. And you can work on pronunciation. After that, we're basically done with the chapter, ¿verdad? And you should read about the cultural aspects, okay? Yo hablo español. ¿Y tú? So what do you think yo hablo español means? ¿Y tú? What do you think that that means? Okay? And start reading. Don't be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid of the language. And... That will help you a lot to develop your linguistic competence. El español es la segunda lengua más hablada en el mundo. Of course, you are going to see a lot of words that you are going to be like, oh my God, what a... but you get the gist, okay? Get the gist, people. Se habla en casi toda América Latina y España. Se habla en, Filipina, en Filipinas y en algunas partes de África. Apréndelo. Learn it, okay? Bien, and I'm going to get to the next page. Um, then you should answer those questions, ¿verdad? And this is about some skills. Skills for you to, to learn, besides the ones that I mentioned before. Um, this is more to uh, the memorization process, okay? And what can you do? You can create some flashcards or you can um, like traditional flashcards or make visual flashcards. Some people like to create songs uh, with the new vocabulary. You decide because it's very difficult for me to give you like a recipe for learning. No. Every human being is very different. So you have to try and start seeing what is working and what is not working. Okay? So if you, let's say that you spend, I don't know, some time memorizing the vocabulary, the new vocabulary, and it's not getting through, change, change the way. Find another strategy. Okay? Uh, in this case, we also have the strategy of grouping words into category. In my case, I love that because I, I, I don't know, it's easier for me to organize things. And it's better when I memorize uh, organizing things in categories, okay? You don't have to do these activities, but uh, if you have time, that will be nice. But remember, what is very important here this week is, besides reading a little bit, is that you, you be able to spell your names, ¿verdad? Say your name in Spanish, use some cognates.
to describe what you are like. Uh, and here, this part, this part, cómo se escribe, qué significa, más despacio, puedes repetir, por favor. Also, the vocabulary of the classroom. ¿Qué hay en el salón? Okay. ¿Qué hay en el salón? Hay un lápiz, un estudiante, una tableta, una carpeta, ¿verdad? Una pizarra. ¿Qué hay en el salón? Ok. Bien. Eh, and that's basically it. That's all about chapter zero. Ok. I'll see you then. Very soon. Hasta luego. Chao.